Hi, I'm Jacob. And I'm Dave. And this is our guide on some of the most overlooked or underutilized features in the most popular digital distribution platform in the world, Steam. Yeah, so whether you've just built your first gaming PC or you need a little bit of a refresher, this handy guide should be all you need to get going with Steam. Without further ado, let's get into the tips. So if you've just picked up a brand new speedy SSD for your PC, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is get your favourite titles transferred over onto the speedy storage as quickly and as efficiently as possible. This used to be a little bit awkward and required some Steam trickery. However, Valve have since included a baked into the app solution. First up, head into Settings, then Downloads, then Steam Library Folders, and Add Library Folder. Make sure this library folder is located on your new drive and you are ready to move some install files. Once you've got this directory set up, you won't need to do this step again unless you install another drive in the future. From here, you are ready to actually move your previously installed games between directories without installing. Just right click on the title you wish to move within the Steam library, select Properties, navigate to Local Files, select Move Install Folder, select the new directory and click Move Folder. Do this for every title you wish to move across to the new drive and Steam will take care of any other redirections that may be required in the back end. Don't want to wait for PUBG to download on your PC? Don't worry, you can borrow another install file from a different computer, whether it's your friends or just another one lying around in the house. All you need to do is ensure Steam is shut down entirely, then copy the game installation directory from within the common folder. This is usually found within the Steam apps folder or under Steam library on a separate drive. Once you've got the game folder, copy this over to your transport media. Plug this media into your target PC, the one where you wish to install the game, shut down Steam if it's running, and copy the game folder from within the transport drive. Next, navigate to the common folder and paste this file within it. Once you've got the files copied over, you want to open up Steam, press install on the selected game you've moved. Of course, you'll need to purchase the game on store first. Once Steam starts to install the game, it will locate the installation folder you've already copied over and swiftly complete the download step without any downloading or delay. If you haven't got any further updates, then you're all done and ready to play the game. You can also create a backup file for an installed game by right clicking on it within the library page and then on your target PC restore the game from this backup through the backup and restore menu in the top left drop down. But we find the directory copy method to be much quicker. Standing around waiting for all your games to install individually is for chumps. We don't have time for that, so we just install all our games at once using Steam's mass install feature. Just hold Ctrl and click all the games you'd like to install. Right click on one of the titles and then click the install button. You'll be greeted by Steam's multiple game install pop-up. And from here you can select which directory you'd like to install all these games to. As a digital distribution platform, Steam tends to involve a lot of downloading, but there are a few tricks that you can carry out to ensure you don't max out your home connection and get the quickest speeds. Head into Settings and then into Downloads. Here you'll see the region you are set to. Usually this will be the closest to you, but you may need to change this to reflect your location. You can also set download restrictions for updates, downloading during gameplay, and limiting the bandwidth Steam has available to it. While full performance metric apps are available, the most basic FPS monitoring can be done through Steam itself. It's a handy tool if you'd like to stay updated on your precious frames per second, and all you need to do to turn it on is head into Settings, in-game, and turn the counter on for whichever corner of the screen takes your fancy. If you like to keep things neat and tidy, then you can grip your games into completely custom categories. Say you want to list them by genre, or age, or whatever takes your fancy, all you have to do is right-click on the title and click Set Categories. You can also do this en masse to make things a little quicker and easier. Group games will appear separately from others in the Steam library list. While you are here, Steam also allows you to keep games which are not downloaded from the Steam store in your Steam library too. Just click Add Game at the bottom left of the library page, or from the game drop-down in the top left, and select Add a non-Steam game. From here, navigate to the game within the drop-down list that should proliferate with all your installed programs. Some games will require you to still go through the relevant launcher, but it can tidy things up a bit, and these can be subsequently categorized too. If you've got a Steam link, then you've probably already been through Steam's in-home streaming process. However, you can make use of this feature without using Val's streaming box. If you've got another computer in the house, then you can stream your installed games between the two machines by setting up a few simple settings in Steam. You want to ensure these machines are both on wired connections for the best experience. Streaming will likely be enabled by default, but if not, you can head into the settings, in-home streaming, and enable the checkbox for streaming. You can also change your settings for speed versus quality here too, depending on your connection and equipment. You can also set up some performance monitoring here as well. 
Streaming is one thing, but did you know you can also share nearly your entire library with your family and friends also? With this feature enabled per device, any user logged in on an enabled machine can access your entire library. It's only available when the game owner is offline, but don't worry, you get priority access to your games if you decide to pick up and play from another location. To turn on family library sharing, you want to head back over to settings, family, and enable the checkbox for library sharing on this computer. This will allow up to five users of your choice to access your library across all your authorized computers. You can check who has access and the names of your authorized computers from the Manage Your Computers link within Family Settings, just in case you need to revoke access remotely for any reason. Command line options are a little bit more advanced than other tips we've covered in this video, but they can be useful just in case you need to troubleshoot your favorite game or add in options that aren't available at launch. To access game launch options, right click on your selected game, open properties and select set launch options. Within this window you'll need to enter certain console commands to get your desired output and press OK to confirm. A list of common console commands can be found on the Steam support page, but a quick Google search will turn up some other commands if need be. It's useful to know that these settings exist if anything were to go wrong, but they can also be useful in forcing certain refresh rates, resolution and system and hardware settings that are likely unavailable in game or might be required from launch. You can even disable Valve's slow developer intro or put supported games into low violence modes with console commands if you like. Natively, Steam has very few personalization options, but don't worry, you aren't stuck looking at the same drab black and grey theme that Valve have rocked for their client forever. There are multitudes of third-party Steam skins online for you to download, offering cleaner, more modern takes on the original skin, or completely changing things up. Metro, Air, there are plenty of fresh and improved UIs out there to liven Steam up a bit. To install a theme, you'll need to find your skins folder within the Steam install directory, download the file from the website of your preferred skin, unzip it within the skins folder, and start up Steam. Within Steam, navigate to Settings, and then to the Interface sub-menu. Within this, you should see a drop-down menu with default skin selected. If you followed all the steps correctly, then this drop-down menu should have options for your selected skin. Select the skin and restart Steam to see the change. So that about covers it. All the Steamy features you never knew about until you'd already done everything you needed to the slow way. So if you find any of the tips we've outlined today useful, then give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Also check back for the latest in hardware and gaming here and on the website. Yes, thanks for watching. Bye.